then we need to really cover, do an energy balance around these feed water heaters to get the correct mass fractions. Because if you mess up that, you can't get the right answer. Last time we did talk quite a bit about steam traps, and I encouraged you to take a look at just what's out there available on the internet. There's not much in our textbook about steam traps, although that they're just, they prevent vapor from flowing and they only allow saturated liquid from flowing or subcooled liquid from flowing. They have many different types and styles of steam traps. I encourage you to take a look at some videos because what I found in the last one to two years, the, the quality and amount of good videos for instruction for learning is dramatically in increased. So you can learn a lot about that. Let's take a look at a closed feed water heater. Here's a picture of one. Somebody at the University of Ohio, a professor, uh, wrote a, technic, a thermodynamics book, just published it online. And one of the figures I took out of his online textbook for thermodynamics, it's a picture of a feed water heater in a real power plant. And so he even overlaid, this is where the feed water comes in. This is where the feed water goes out. It's a very long feed water heater goes down, but the steam comes in and the drain out for the condensate. And so there's your two main ins and out, and this is very long. Okay, so this is another uh, illustration out of his online textbook. As the feed water comes up, and then it can go there's a plate right here that prevents it also from going up, but it, it forces it to go into tubes. Or there could be a lot of these tubes. And the tubes go down, they turn around, and they come back, and then they go into another plate, and they come out. And so this is like a manifold and a manifold. But when the tubes come down, the flow is really cold, so it's best place to take the liquid condensate out. And when the feed water is coming out, it's the warmest it's going to be, and that's probably a good place to have the hot steam bleed in. You know, it's bled off from some place like between two turbine, turbine stages. And they have a zone where it's desuperheating. What? Well, engineers can make up all kinds of words, right? Desuperheating. You can't find it in Webster's, but it's the steam is superheated in, in that region. It's going to be cooled until it flows to this region where it's now going to be condensing. Then it flows on the outside of the tubes. Typically there's baffles to force it to swish around. And it's condensing and it's going to be collecting droplets at the bottom. And then it'll have a zone after it's condensed where it's uh, subcooling. And you could actually bring it out. In our analysis, we take out saturated liquid, not subcooled liquid, out of there. Okay. Here's another picture of a manufacturer. I believe this manufacturing company is in New Jersey somewhere. Um, and here's their illustration of a high-pressure feed water heater. So basically they have high-pressure, low-pressure feed water heaters. It's very similar. So the feed water inlet, feed water outlet, uh, the steam inlet, they have a desuperheating zone. You have a condensate zone. You have some water level in the bottom, the water level, condensing zone, and then subcooling zone, and then the condensate out, not shown in this illustration. Noting that in the subcooling zone, there's some details. And they're showing you where they, the, the design engineers introduce baffles to force the flow repeatedly across the tubes for good heat transfer. Likewise, in the desuperheating zone. Okay. Now we come into uh, how to handle, especially calculating uh, this mass fraction y that comes down. Okay. So, so I find a lot of students are asking questions about that. Um, start with an energy balance, and I would encourage you to do it with mass flow rates. So let's say we have really only three mass flow rates for this problem. We have the mass flow rate that comes out of the steam generator and into the first turbine stage. Maybe last time I put m.t1. Let's just call that m.t. 
And then we have some that gets diverted down to the closed feed water heater. We could put M dot C F W H, but let's just put M dot C. And once I have those two, what's the flow rate that goes into the second turbine stage? Isn't that M dot T minus M dot C? What's the mass flow rate going into the condenser? M dot T minus M dot C. Isn't that true? What's the mass flow rate going through the steam trap? into the steam trap, out of the steam trap, into this condenser from the bottom. What's coming out of the condenser? There's only one out of the condenser and into the pump one. M dot what? You've got to get your mass flow rates right throughout the system. Agreed? Agreed. So what comes in here? M dot T. And then M dot T. All right. Now that I got the mass flow rates, I'm ready to do an energy balance, and in this energy balance, I'm going to put H2 and H8 and H6 and H7 as if they're calculatable or I already know them. And then in that energy balance, let's just write it out. So we're going to have mass flow rate that feeds the closed feed water heater, bringing with it its enthalpy at 2, that's an N, plus the mass flow rate coming from pump 1 times enthalpy 6 equal to mass flow rate going out to the steam trap H8 plus mass flow rate going out to the steam generator enthalpy 7. Do you like that energy balance? Where's Q dot? It's not there. Where's W dot? Not there. You could start with the most general and get to here, but you need to get here, get it quickly, and get it correctly. Maybe I want to take and divide every term by m dot t, m dot t, m dot t, and m dot t. Why did I do that? Because guess what y is? The mass fraction that goes down to feed the closed feed water heater divided by what came out of or went into the first turbine stage. What came out of the steam generator, or what went into the first turbine stage. Isn't that my definition of Y? You have to know what the definition of Y. I talked to some students and it's like, what is Y? Mm -hmm. and they bat around, bat around a little bit and they don't have a clear, quick definition of what Y is. Okay? So what we do is we get an equation for Y times H2 minus H8 equal to H7 minus H6. Did I do the algebra okay? And so now here's our final equation for Y. H7 minus H6. H2 minus H8. Do you agree? Start with the simpler one before we move to the more complicated one, right? Somebody says, ah, I have a closed feed water heater but I don't have a trap bringing it back this way. I have a pump that kicks it over that way. Hmm, what's my equation for Y? A lot of students would just like to do this. They'd like to write down, I think it's H7 minus H6 divided by H, it looks like two here and nine there. I know the professor, you know, renumbered or whoever set up this problem renumbered the numbering, but I think that's the right answer. Let me proceed from here. Because I'm on a test, time is critical, and I just hope it's right. I did that with units. It works sometimes, right? I just hope my units work out, and I just blow on from there. And I'm going to try that with some equations. Can I ask you to do this for me? Can I ask you in the next minute or two? Solve for what should y be for this problem. Give me the equation for y. Redo what I just did for the previous problem, but for this slightly different problem. Okay? I'm going to pause and uh, let you do that. Okay, so what do you have to do? You have to get the mass flow rates right. And I think you start with the steam generator. What comes out? We're going to say that goes into the first turbine stage. After the first turbine stage, you have a split. Some of it, whatever notation you want, I'm going to say M dot C is what goes down to feed the closed feed water heater. And then what continues on going up this way is what went in minus what went down to feed the closed feed water heater. What came out went into the second turbine stage, 
m dot t minus m dot c. What came out and went into the condenser? m dot t minus m dot c. True? I'm getting those mass flow rates right. Into the pump, m dot t minus m dot c. What goes out of the first pump? m dot t minus m dot c. Work that carefully and go all the way around. What a lot of people put right here? Just m dot t. What? How did m dot t all of a sudden appear? Oh, but professor, look at this problem. It was m dot t. What changed? The team trap dumped everything back to condenser, so then it was all 100% again. But this problem is not the same. True? So this is m dot t minus m dot c. I have to get the mass flow rate right. What comes out here to the goes into the second pump? Is it m dot c? Yes, it is, isn't it? What comes out at 7 goes this way right here. M dot T minus M dot C. Very good. What stays in the shell side stays in the shell side. What goes in the tube side comes out the tube side, right? They don't mix. It's a closed feed water heater. We do an energy balance, right? At this point, the game's up, isn't it? Can you do the energy balance to get the right answer from here? How about if I give you a few minutes to get the energy balance correct from here on out? Continue on. Okay, uh, somebody says I'm having a hard time on the mass balance. Here's our box. We have an inflow of m dot c and an outflow of m dot c. We have an inflow of m dot t minus m dot c. And we have an outflow of m dot t minus m dot c. Well, you could say this is the mass flow rate coming from state 2. This is the mass flow rate going to state 9. This is the mass flow rate coming from state 6. This is the mass flow rate going to state 7. That's all fine, but, but isn't, isn't this balanced if I just look at this terms like I just underlined in blue? Isn't what comes in equal to what comes out? Is that right? Is that okay? Mass flow rates? Pardon? So now what we say is, let's do the energy balance. So if I say this mass flow rate's bringing with it its enthalpy at 2, this mass flow rate's taking with it its enthalpy uh, at 9, this mass flow rate coming in at H6, this mass flow rate going out at H7, it's going to be uh, m dot c times h2 minus h9 equal to m dot t minus m dot c times h7 minus h6. Did I do the algebra correct? At this point, what do you suggest I do to the equation? Divide all terms by m dot t. I notice that this is the definition of y, this is 1 minus y. Look at it, if it takes me this many lines to do it, it's going to take you that many lines if not a few more so you don't mess up the algebra, right? And so then y is equal to, this one I'm running out of time and space so I'm just going to say it's equal to h7 minus h6 then it's going to be H2 minus H9 plus H7 minus H6. Give me the equation for Y prime and then the equation for Y double prime for this problem. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to see how many people can. Okay, since we're running out of time, I would do this. I would say this is mass flow rate that comes into the first turbine. I have a split right here. This is the mass flow rate to feed the first or the closed feed water heater. It then continues on and I have mass flow rate turbine minus m dot c goes to the reheater, comes out m dot turbine minus m dot c. But I have a split after the third turbine, don't I? What comes down here? I've got to give it a name, m dot o. 
M.O, M.C, M.T, I have three mass flow rates. What comes out of the fourth turbine? That's the same as what goes out of the condenser, M dot T minus M dot C minus M dot O. True or false? It's critical to get that right. So now you come over here, this M dot C comes over here, M dot C, M dot C. So in the open feed water, we have a feed from the top, M dot O, a feed from the side, M dot T minus M dot C minus M dot O, plus a feed from the bottom, M dot C. What comes out at 9 going to the first pump, or second pump? M dot T. And then M dot T is coming out of the closed, going up to the steam generator. Did I get those mass flow rates right? I'm sorry? Okay, but I have to end the lecture. I have to end the lecture. So at this point, I can do an energy balance around here, and that will give me an equation. I'll do an energy balance around here. This energy balance will only have Y prime in it. This energy balance will have Y prime and Y double prime. Use the first energy balance to calculate the equation for Y prime. Then stick that solution in here and the second energy balance to get Y double prime. Got it. I'm out of time. Thank you for your attention.